Hi, this is Kylie Koo. Welcome to my studio. So, we are into April and that means a new prompt in the Mixed Media Emporium Facebook group. And our prompt this month is nature. And Nina and I have decided to keep the challenges for each week very broad. So the challenge for this week is trees. I nearly made a big faux pas this week because I had next week's prompt in mind. However, when I sat down, I thought about what I could do and here's what I came up with. And as always, I will put this on at a greater speed. So I'm taking this piece of Arteza A3 paper that's been sitting on my desk. It's got a few little marks on it. I sometimes use it if I'm taking photographs you know, for my thumbnails, etc. But because of the marks, I thought I'll just use this now. I need to take a fresh piece out. I halved it into A4 size and then halved again into A5 size. I'm now taking out my gel plate and don't judge me for the state that this is in. It's just the way I work. So I'm basically going to make some, what could be described as mini painted master boards and I'm taking two colours to begin with, both Dela Rowney, one is pistachio and the other one is sap green which is a heavy body. Now that pistachio, I don't know, I have a terrible habit of breaking caps on paints and that one had, I don't know, a funny kind of liquid sitting at the top of it so I just squeezed some out and I'm getting rid of that and using the fresher stuff that was sitting below. And I'm just mixing those two in. You'll see the sap green doesn't spread out quite in the same way and that's simply because it's a heavier body one. Now all I'm going to do is a similar process for each. I had done some ATCs on that side before and that's why there's that gridded effect. But I'm quite happy to have that transfer over into these pieces. I'm really looking to make some, in some sense, kind of grungy backgrounds, but grungy with some perhaps lighter colours than normal. And what I decided to do today was to reflect some of the colours in the garden. I, when I think of nature, am very much inspired by colours, by textures. As I say, I had next week's prompt in mind and when I realised it was something different, I had to quickly come up with something. So, kind of working intuitively, but in a sense, know where I want to go with this. Now taking out some of my PBO iridescent paints. I love these paints. One is blue-black and the other one is blue-green. And basically, I'm going to follow a similar process, just getting that down on the gel plate and putting some of that colour onto each of my little mini master boards. Now, you know, if you want to do a project like this and you don't have a gel plate, remember that we did do kind of monoprinting last year without a gel plate, so I'll leave a link to that above. And you could use that or you could just do a painted background. This was just a quick way of me getting some colour down onto the pages. And, you know, the gel plate does allow that kind of blending and mixing of colours pretty quickly and getting the kind of effect that I wanted today. Now, as I said earlier, the prompt and challenge for the week in terms of trees is very open. So you do whatever you feel you would like to do in relation to it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a small playlist together called Trees, which I'll link above and at the end. And, you know, you may get some other inspiration from that. So I've got my four pieces of A5 card now, and I'm starting to think about what do I want to actually do with them. And they're all slightly different, you know, I've uh, mixed a balance of colours on each one. This one I decide to just literally pull in half again, tear in half again. I'm not worried about those rough lines around it, I'm perfectly happy with that, it's organic looking. This one I decide to make ATC, ATC size, artist trading card size, which is three and a half inches by two and a half inches. Just looking here to get a nice straight edge, so I do actually manage to get it to the, the kind of right size. I'm a great believer in the old adage, 
measure twice, cut once. Unfortunately, I sometimes still get it wrong, but I think I got it right on this occasion. So basically, I've got a card that's A3 size. No, I haven't. I've got a card that's ATC size. I've got uh, an A6 size and an A5 size. And what I'm going to do now is to take some stays on ink and a variety of things just basically to make marks. So this is a bit of embroidery plastic. I've had this for years. I saw it in hobby craft and thought it would be good for mark making. And thanks to those of you who, when I last used it, said I didn't know what it was actually for, uh, you enlightened me to what it was for. So I'll probably never use it for its intended purpose. It, to me, is just for mark making. I, I like that. Here is a little piece of a dowel, a plastic dowel. I was doing something in the garden that required dowels. These bits had to be cut off and I just kept them. And again, just making marks across the various pages. Now, I got very inky with this. I'm just one of those people that get really messy with paints and inks. Are you like that? Let me know below if you get messy or if you like to kind of clean up all the time and have nice clean hands. I've just always been messy like this. Using a bit of punchinella as well, used the end of that dowel just to get some marks on, just looking to grunge it up and get some nice background interest. Going to use two more Pabio paints now. This one is also iridescent and it is green yellow. And then I'll use the Pabio Oriental Violet, which is a transparent. And I'm just literally getting little bits and pieces of this down onto my pieces of uh, mixed media paper. I'll try and leave a link below to all the makes and colours that I've used and uh, links to, to some of the items. Mopping up with old dictionary pages there, so not losing any colour. I like to use it all. If you're not a member of the Mixed Media Emporium Facebook group, then I'll leave a link below in case you're interested in joining. It is a prompt related group, so we only allow posts related to the prompts. And there are some questions that you need to answer to join. If you don't answer them, you're automatically declined. So moving on. Now having a think about what I can actually put onto these pieces. And this is a tree stamp from Hobbycraft. I think at the time it was either 50 pence or one pound. I don't have the actual name of it, just a clear stamp from them. And I'm just gonna put this onto the ATC. The little bit of the violet bottom reminded me a little bit of a hill, so I've just put it onto there. As I say, I've tried to use colors that were inspiring me, colors that are in the garden just now. You know, the greens are starting to come through. There's the violet colours and the crocus, etc. So, you know, taking a kind of slightly abstract approach to it, but just feeling that that's what I wanted to reflect today. For the bigger piece, the A5 size, I'm taking this stencil that's by Plaid or Plaid Folk Art, and it's called Curly Tree. And I just thought this was of a nice size that would go nicely with this uh, background. So the paints I'm using this time are from my Arteza metallic set. And for the leaves, I started to use Pearl Sea Green. And for the main trunk and branches, I'll use Pearl Deep Brown. Now, I wasn't sure that this green was going to show up against the green metallic that I already had down. So you'll see me just checking there. And I decide, in fact, that it's not going to work. So nevertheless, I crack on and I do the trunk and the branches with the Deep Brown. And this works really well. I just wanted something today that 
if you see it in the light, you know, the light will pick up the various colours in the background. So as I say, it's kind of grungy, but a bright grungy, if you know what I mean. Now, I like to generally use a stencil brush for stenciling. I know a lot of people use makeup brushes, but for me, this just works better with the makeup brushes, or not brushes, sponges. I often seem to go underneath the stencil. So here I've reverted to using the sap green on the little leaves, and that just seems to stand out that little bit more. So reflecting the fact that on the trees just now, they're all starting, the leaves are starting to come, especially on my uh, cherry blossom tree. The blossom's not out yet, although funnily enough, I had a, a photo popped up in my uh, Facebook memories today, or whatever they called it, and it was my tree actually in bloom at this time last year. So it's a little bit later this year, probably because I think we've had a, a bit of a longer winter. I just wanted to use the excess paint left over, and you'll see I just used my acrylic block this time as a palette, just to, to use some of that up. So, looking now at taking some of this deep brown, and you'll see that piece of kind of corrugated paper off to the left. That came out of either a packet of biscuits, or cookies as you might call them, or perhaps it was from chocolates or something. I was going to stamp that down onto this card to get a kind of tree effect, but when I saw what was left on the gel plate, I decided to put the piece of paper right down onto the gel plate. So this is a very abstract piece of kind of looking at really tree, really looking at eye level into a wood where you mainly see the tree trunks. And I have a wood like that quite near me and it's quite thick and you get a bit of light through it, but it's quite dark in there. That little ATC, I'd added some of the sap green to the top, didn't like it, but instead decided to start to add it to the tree itself. So it looks like the tree actually has lots of leaves on it, green leaves on it. So now I'm taking a Derwent graphic in sepia, it's a 0 0.5 size, and I just want to start to draw in some of these lines just to almost kind of bring out the fact that these are tree trunks. Now it's not quite as dark as I would have liked it, so I do then take out a Derwent graphic black, but it's a 0 0.3 that I use this time. And I think that just helps to define those tree trunks a little bit better. They're not really like the tree trunks that I see. These are much thinner. These would perhaps be more like poplar trees, but you know, it's an abstract. And uh, this was just something that reminded me of all those tree trunks and looking through that wood. As I was doing this, I was reminded of the John Muir quote, the clearest way into the universe is through a forest wilderness. And I'm really inspired by John Muir. I'll leave a link to a video that I did last year, which was a little concertina artist book using magazine images and using a quote from John Muir. So just adding little bits of detail here, some of the background mark making reminded me of some of the marks we see on trees. Here I'm just going to put in a little bit of a shadow effect, grounding the tree, just uh, putting a line there a couple of times just to show that it's, it's on solid ground rather than floating in the air, and just a little bit of a shadow effect just to help define it that little bit more. So I'm hoping that this week I've shown you that there are a number of different ways to approach the challenge of nature and trees. You know, I've used a, a stamp, I've used a stencil, and I've used a bit of recycled packaging, really. I'd like to do something more with that one of the recycled packaging, but to be honest, I'm just not 
quite sure yet where I want to take it to. But I'm finishing all three off at this point just by taking my black stays on ink and just going around the edges. To me that just helps again define the entire piece and just to set it off. So I may come back at some point and do a bit more to these or I may just leave them as is. I did at one point consider doing some white splatters and that would have fitted in a sense with the fact that today here we had a very heavy frost and I thought it might look a bit like that but it might look a bit too much like snow. So I basically decided to leave them all as is at the moment. But the thing about art is you can kind of go back at any time and add to it. These would be good to even do in a journal or to add into a journal. Uh, for the time being, I will just keep them as little standalone pieces. I like my little blackbird as I'm seeing it sitting there. And again, at this time of year for me in the garden, there's lots of birds going all around, lots of blackbirds. And I love sitting watching them in the trees. So nice simple in a sense ATC there but but for me I think it's quite effective. As always I'll leave a link to Nina's video before and as always I'll say please stay safe, take care and I hope to see you again next time. Bye for now.